Today we'll be doing a full step-by-step -step tutorial on how to place stop-loss orders within Weeble. There are a couple different ways to do this, so I will be covering how to place a stop-loss on a position you already hold in your account, then we'll go over how to do it on a brand new trade, and then finally we'll even cover how to do this much, much quicker using the Active Trader tool. Now jumping right into it, let's first begin with how to place a stop loss on one of our current open positions. And if I look down here in the lower right hand corner of my Weeble screen, you can actually see I already have a positions gadget right here. Looking here in the list, we can actually see all of the current positions I have in this account, how many shares I have, the price I bought it for, and the price that they're currently trading for. So coming down here and using one of these stocks as an example, if we were to look at my CX position, you can see I currently have about three shares. I bought them for $4.15 and unfortunately they're down to $3.68. So let's say I wanted to put a stop loss order on this thing saying if it ever went down below $3.50, I wanted to cut my losses. I just wanted to get out of this position. To do that, all we need to do is right click anywhere on this line. And right here, all I do is right click on it. Then look above in the drop down menu. And if I come to the very top of that list and select the one that says close position, I can then come to the left and select the button that says close in order entry tool. You'll then see that as soon as we click on that, it'll actually build out the order ticket right over here on the left hand side in this order entry tool. So looking here from left to right, it says we just want to do a single stock position. It's going to be on CX. We are selling. We're going to sell our entire quantity of three shares and by default it does fill it in as a limit order and it's got the limit price set to $3.69. Of course we could adjust all of these parameters if we wanted to. Like for example, maybe I didn't want to stop out of my entire position. I only wanted to get stopped out of let's say two shares. I also don't want to use a limit order. So what I'm going to do is come over here to where it says limit and click on that little box there. That'll then open up a little drop down menu where I can then select the type of stop I want to use. And if we look down here, there are actually three different ones, whether it be a stop, a stop limit, or a trailing stop. For those of you not super familiar with the differences between these three order types, they are actually very, very similar. And if we begin with the stop order, this is actually known as a stop market order. If we were to click on that, you'll actually notice it just asks us for the activation price. It's asking us if the stock were to drop down to this level, we want to get out of it. And in this case, if we put it at, let's just keep it at 350, we're essentially saying if the stock ever goes down to 350 or lower, put out a market order to get me out immediately. Now the downside of using just a regular stop market order is the fact that we don't know exactly what we could fill at. Because remember, stops do not work in the after hours. So if CX were to have a big move in the pre-market, let's say it was trading at 360, but in the pre-market they announced some terrible earnings and it drops all the way down to three. Well, since stops don't work in the pre-market, it's gonna wait until the market opens up to activate this stop. And in that example, if it dropped all the way down to three bucks, that's the price I'm gonna sell these shares for. To protect against that, some people prefer to use a stop limit order. So if we come over here and click on the word stop and then adjust it to a stop limit, what that then allows us to do is actually set a lower end threshold for this trade. So we can still say if the stock goes down below 350, get me out because I don't want to lose any more money. But if it were trading below three, I would not want to sell this position. So right here, you can see I typed in three. And if I hit enter, what I'm essentially saying is I do still want to get out if it goes down below 350, but if it were to gap down below three, I would never want to sell these shares. But like the regular old stop market order we just covered before this one, this one has its own risks. And the risk of this one is you might not ever end up selling your position. So let's say we use that same example before. CX has a terrible earnings announcement and it drops down to, let's say $2 now in this example. Well, because we had a stop limit order, we said we would never want to sell these shares unless it went back up to three. Now, if the stock does eventually go back up to three, you're going to be happy that you used a stop limit order. But if it were to go bankrupt the next day, if the stock were to go down to zero, you're going to wish you would just use a stop market order and gotten out at two. So there's no perfect order type. You kind of just have to pick which one makes the most sense for you. And in our case, we're actually going to flip it back over. And actually, I forgot to talk about the last one here, the trailing stop order. Now, the trailing stop order is actually quite a bit different than the previous two examples, because in the case of a trailing stop, instead of setting a very specific amount, we're actually saying if it drops by a certain amount, get me out. 
So for example, if we were to come up here and type in, let's just say 50 cents to keep it simple, what we're essentially saying is, if this stock ever drops by 50 cents, get me out. But the nice thing is, as that stock price moves up, our stop actually moves up behind it, always following it by 50 cents. Now at the current price, if we were to hit place order right now, with the stock currently trading at roughly, I would just say 370, this stop is going to go in at 320. But then assuming the stock doesn't drop 50 cents, and let's say it instead actually starts to go up, and it eventually goes up to, let's just say $4 even. That means our stop has actually moved up as well, always following it by 50 cents, which means our stop is now sitting at 350. Now we could also come over here and instead of setting a dollar amount, we could actually flip that over to a percentage amount and instead say if the stock ever drops by 5%, then get me out. So trail it by 5%. But to keep things simple in our example, we're going to come up here and flip this over from a trailing stop to just a regular stop. I'm going to leave it set as 350 again saying if this stock ever drops below 350 put out a market order to get me out because I don't want to lose any more money. I can also come over here to the right and adjust it from a day order to a GTC order meaning good until cancelled. So now instead of this order just canceling itself at the end of the day at 4 p.m. Eastern time it's going to go out again tomorrow and the next day and the next day. The only downside being this is not going to do anything during the pre and post market. But now in order to place it, we will simply come down here and hit place order. It'll then bring up a little order confirmation box just to confirm everything looks right. And in this case it does, we're placing an order to sell our two shares if it ever drops below 350. And in order to place that, we will simply hit sell down here. We'll now be able to see that as a working order a few different places, whether it be over here on my orders tab. So right here I can see the working order right here or we can actually see it over here on my charts tab as well. So right here, I've got my sell stop at 350 and it might be easier to see if we zoom out a bit. And then later down the line, if I wanted to adjust that order in some way or just outright cancel it, I could do it right here from the chart. So to adjust it, I could simply click on it and hold down and then drag it up or drag it down to the new stop activation price. In this case, it looks like I'm dragging it up to, it looks like 358 and if I were to let go, it's then going to ask me to confirm that I do in fact want to adjust this stop and then all I have to do is hit the sell button once again. Now we can see the stop has moved up to 358 and then to just outright cancel it I'll just hit the X button over here and then just hit the OK button to confirm that I do want to cancel this order. But that's really the gist of how you will place a stop loss order on one of your current open positions. Just come over here to the positions tab right click on the position you want to close, close position, and then close in order entry, and then adjust it to a stop. Next up, if we wanted to do this on a brand new position, one we haven't even bought yet, so let's come up here and actually flip this over to, I don't know, SoFi, S-O-F-I, hit enter on the keyboard. Looking here, we can see SoFi is currently trading for $6.06. .06. So what I want to do is come down here to the order entry tool, lower left hand corner, and select add a new order. We can then see a brand new order ticket pops up to actually just outright buy one share of SoFi with a limit order at 606, good for the day. What we're going to be doing for this example is saying that we want to buy one share of SoFi if it ever drops down to, let's say, 580. And then if that ever happens, if I actually end up buying it for 580, I want to get stopped out if it goes down to 550. So just a very simple way to automate some of our trading just a little bit. Now I don't have to sit here and just watch it all day. It'll just work automatically for me. So what we first need to do is build out the opening ticket and it's kind of halfway built out. We're buying one share with a limit order, but I believe I said I wanted to adjust the activation price or excuse me, the buy price down to 580. I'm also going to come to the right and adjust this from a day order to a GTC order because I want this to go out every single day until it fills. Then what I want to do is actually say that whenever this trade fills, I want to stop to go out right behind it. To do that, we simply need to come over here to the far left hand side of the order ticket where it currently says single. Just go ahead and click on that. We'll then see a list of options down here below, whether it be first trigger stop, OTO, OCO, or one triggers other OCO. I actually talk about these more advanced orders in a different video, so check that out if you wanted to learn more. But for right now, we're actually just going to click on the one that says first trigger stop. You can then see it still has the opening ticket to buy our one share at 580, but then there's two separate sell tickets right below it. The first one of these is a stop loss order. The second is a take profit order. 
And in our example today, we don't want a take profit order. We only wanted a stop loss. So I'm going to come over here to the left and deselect that. Now that we only have the stop loss order selected, meaning we only want the stop loss to go out behind the opening trade, we can then actually set the parameters. Coming over to the right, we can see it is using a stop order. But if we come here, we can adjust the actual activation price. And in my example, I said 550 or lower. Now that I've got 550 set and it is set to a GTC, meaning this is going to go out every single day until it fills. If I'm happy with this and everything looks good, I will just come down here below and hit place order. Just like before, it brings up a little order confirmation, just confirming everything looks right. And right here it says our primary order is to buy one share of 580. Then if that order fills, the stop is going to go out there to get us out if it drops below 550. To place that, we'll simply come down here and hit buy. And now we can see both of those orders right here on the chart. So the opening trade at 580, the closing ticket to stop us out at 550. Just like before, I can adjust those if I want to just by clicking, dragging up or dragging down, then just confirming in the order confirmation if I did want to adjust it. So in this case, I'm adjusting the stop up to 571. So we'll just hit buy. And there we go. We still have our opening trade at 580, but now our stop has been moved up from 550 up to 571. To cancel that, I'll simply come up here and hit the little X button, then just confirm that I do in fact want to cancel it by hitting OK. The final method that I wanted to show you is how to do that using the Active Trader tool up here in the upper right hand corner. And we can essentially do what we just did, but with one single click. To do that, what we need to do is actually create a custom button. So right now, all we have here is a button to buy 100 shares or sell 100 shares using a market order. So in order to add a brand new button, we need to click on the menu icon in the upper right, then look down below in the active trader settings and go ahead and click on that. We'll then get a brand new menu over here on the left hand side where we can first see all of the buttons that we're currently using and all of our current buttons will have little check marks next to them. And if I scroll down, you can see there are quite a few right here. But now in order for us to add that brand new button, we're going to scroll back up to the top and make sure we're in the place order stock section and we're going to create a brand new buy customize button. To do that, we simply need to hit the little check mark box to the left and then come over here to the right to adjust all of our parameters. So right up here at the top, we'll first begin by setting our opening trade parameters. So right here, it's saying how many shares do we actually want to buy when we hit this button and what order type do we want to use? I'm going to go ahead and leave it as a limit order. But if we clicked on that, you do see you do have a market order available and we could come over here and adjust the quantity if we wanted to. We could also come right below that and actually base the order price off of a particular price in the market right now. So do we want it to go off the asking price, uh, the last traded price, or the current bid price? In our case, we'll go ahead and leave it as the asking price because that's essentially the best price we can buy it for right now. And then if we look to the right, you can also notice I have a limit offset. And that essentially means I don't want my order to go in right at the asking price. I want it to go in 10 cents below the asking price. Now, if you didn't want that, you could, of course, just come in here and type in zero. And now whenever we hit this button, the order is going to go in right at the asking price. For right now, I don't want to use that since I don't actually want this trade to fill. So I'm going to go ahead and type in negative 10 cents here again. And now that we've got that set, the only thing we need to do next is actually specify how long we want this good for. In this case, we'll leave it as a GTC order. And then down below that, we're going to specify we want a stop loss order to go out behind it. So here I'm simply going to check mark this little box that says stop loss order. And then down here below, I can specify the percentage offset for that stop. If we always wanted our stops to go in, let's say 15% below wherever we buy at, we would just adjust this to 15. And then now that I'm happy with that, we would simply come down here and hit the done button. We'll then be able to see that brand new button we created right up here in the active trader tools. To test that out and make sure it's actually working correctly, if we were to click on that button right now and looking down here, we've got an open order to buy one share at $5.97 and then our stop has gone in 15% below at $5.07. But I think you all get the general idea and hopefully after all that, you do feel a lot more comfortable with how to place stop loss orders within Webull. If you do still have questions or recommendations for other video topics you'd like me to discuss, just let me know down below. And also, if you were looking to learn more, YouTube seems to think you'll find this next video helpful as well. So be sure to check it out. But that's it for now. Have a great rest of your week, everyone, and I'll catch you on the next video.